I'm here with Stephen Munitones, founder of the World Open Water Swimming Association, or WOWZA. Stephen is also a marathon swimming historian. Today, we are just days away from the Olympic Games in Tokyo, and we're profiling the 25 men, 25 women competing in the Olympic 10K marathon swim in a dive of Marine Park. Today, we're talking about Gregorio Paltrinieri. Stephen, what can you tell us about Gregorio? This 26-year-old Italian is extremely, extremely accomplished uh, in the pool. And he actually has some uh, long-held roots in the open water. But in the pool, uh, there's no one more accomplished than him, with the exception of Os Maluli, who's 37. Um, uh, Gregorio has 10 gold, 7 silver, and 8 bronze medals at the World Championships or Olympics. He is the defending Olympic champion in the 1500 meters. And of all those accolades aside, I can't think of a more impressive swim than he did in the middle of the lockdown, the, the pandemic in August of last year. So right in the middle of the lockdown, people are quarantined, uh, swim meets are canceled, uh, most pools were closed. Gregorio pulled off a 1433 in the 1500 meter freestyle. So he had to be in training. He had to be in training. There's no human way anybody could swim a 1433, which was nearly a world record um, in the 1500 meter freestyle with training. So here the rest of the world is locked down and Gregorio pulls off a 1433. I mean, he could be the first person that breaks 1430 in the 1500 uh, freestyle. If he does that, I don't know of anybody with the possible exception of uh, Florian Welbrock who could keep up with him. I mean, if I were Gregorio, I would just go out fast and challenge everybody to keep up with me. I mean, if I am the fastest swimmer, man, you, I'd take off and I'd challenge these guys to, to follow me. I think, and he's done this before, he's gone out so fast that nobody can actually draft off of him. Now, of course, the rest of the pack can conserve energy. So you could have Gregorio out in the front and 24 guys, or really 10 top guys, drafting each other, conserving energy. Yeah, that could happen. Um, but I think uh, Gregorio and the Italian brain trust, I think they're going to be much more um, uh, strategic about how they're going to use Gregorio's uh, uh, talents. I mean, you know, uh, at the last world championships, he finished uh, sixth uh, to qualify automatically. So he's the sixth seed here. Um, but in that same uh, swim meet, he also did a 1438 and a 739 in the 1500 and 800 meter freestyle respectively. I mean, those are so, so fast. Um, and so I don't know what this guy is capable of. I mean, he could just like you have Adam Peaty, the breast, the British breaststroker who does a 56 in the hundred meter breaststroker, just two seconds faster than everybody. How do you, how do you swim a hundred meter freestyle against the world's best swimmers and be so far out ahead? Same thing applies for Gregorio. He's so much faster than everybody. Uh, and you know, he's got this sort of, Weird stroke. I wouldn't say weird. I uh, will call it unique. Um, and, you know, Quinn, you've seen it before. Uh, can you describe it to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like he uses a little bit of undulation with his body. And it's super unconventional from the standpoint of a smooth, long technical stroke. He's got a high tempo uh, and he keeps his body really high with that high tempo um, but he also kind of does this lunging motion with, with every stroke. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's really fun to watch. So, Stephen, here you have a guy who's probably the gold medal favorite in the mile. How is that going to affect how he approaches? How many days apart are they? And how is that going to impact his strategy for the 10K swim? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's enough time to recover, you know, five or so days. However... The real key is, you know, as a former swimmer, how do you taper? I mean, you know, Gregorio's probably going to swim the 800 too. I mean, on paper, he's the favorite in the 800 meters and the 1500 meters. I mean, you can't throw that away. You can't give up two, 
almost guaranteed podium finishes to look at the 10 K. I mean, the guy's got to go for it. I mean, yes, he might be the favorite, but I mean, if he's this far off, there's people right behind him. So he's got three major races, two that require a preliminary shouldn't be too much of prom and a hard final. He's got to recover from all of those. You know, you've got the 800, 1500 and 10 K really spaced out. So the guy's got to be on top of his game basically throughout the Olympics. I mean, this is a tough, tough mental challenge. And especially if we think about the, the conditions of the COVID-19 virus in the Olympic Village. I mean, we hear of people being, you know, testing positive, getting ill. I mean, if you're somebody like the Italian Olympic Brain Trust, and you've got a guy potentially could be three gold medals in the three toughest races. I mean, what do you do for that guy? Do you isolate him in his room? And if you isolate him in his room, is that really the best psychological preparation for an athlete? I mean, do you keep a tiny, tiny bubble? Um, I know most of the open water swimmers and distance swimmers, I mean, to be honest, they are, they're usually by themselves anyway. They're training by themselves in the animal lane and they're doing a lot further yardage or mileage than anybody else. Um, yeah, so they're sort of used to that, you know, off by yourself, but I mean, the Olympics are the Olympics and, you know, every athlete goes to the Olympics with all kinds of excitement and expectations. And Gregorio had a wonderful Rio Olympics. And now he goes to Tokyo in a completely different atmosphere. Uh, Gregorio is a, is a personable guy, multilingual guy, always smiling. I mean, you know, this guy likes to have uh, people around him, but what happens in the Olympics when people are being tested positive, when you're very worried about close contact, I mean, that changes the equation. And when you have to be on top of your game from the 800 meter free to the 1500 meter free and then the 10 K swim, I mean, that's a long time to be on your game. Now, what's really interesting is let's dial back to 2016. Let's say Gregorio, there was no lockdown, no quarantine as they were in Rio. Well, a lot of the European uh, swimmers, they stay for the, their, their pool teammates who are now in the Olympic 10K marathon swim and they cheer them on. That's great. The U.S. is a little bit different. You know, as soon as the ending uh, uh, end uh, the last relay, American swimmers go off and here the poor American swimmers are, they've been cheering their teammates for the, you know, the, the, the Olympic trials and the Olympics. And then all of a sudden they've got nobody but their coach. Now a few of their friends might stick around. So now Gregorio's in that same exact position because under Olympic rules, you have to leave two, 48 hours after your last event and Gregorio's 10K swim is five days after the last pool event. So now Gregorio doesn't have that Italian, you know, camaraderie. He doesn't have all his Italian teammates and friends to support him. So what does that play on his mind? Again, distance swimmers are tough, very tough mentally, but it is different. So Gregorio's got a lot on his mind. He's got a lot of talent and it's going to be very interesting for me how he plays off this, you know, fairy workman of, of, of uh, the Netherlands and Florian Welbrock of, of Germany and, and all these great swimmers who, you know, are, would willingly pounce on him if he shows any weakness in any of his, his events. That's a really good point, Stephen. He has to prepare uh, physically for really an incredible, unprecedented Olympic program and time that taper over, it's going to be over a week yeah, absolutely. for all of his events, which is, that's really tough physically to get that taper timing just right. But you also bring up a great point mentally as well with some of these new rules. It's just harder to, to be at your absolute peak at a 10 uh, for so many days. So Stephen, given all of this, what is your final prediction for Gregorio? I think Gregorio does extremely well in the pool and he doesn't medal in the 10 K. I just think that long period of time from, you know, tapering for the 800 meter free 
trying to uh, defend his Olympic 1500 meter time and then coming back for the 10 K is, is too much. And there's, there's one other little thing that, that, you know, I, I've been looking at his stroke and, and wondering, you know, he breathes only to the right side. Now I don't know whether there be swimming in the counterclockwise direction or the clockwise direction. However, if you only traditionally breathe on one side, somebody like a fairy workman who's always aware of everybody around him, I mean, think about it. The, the water in Odaiba Marine Park is at best murky. I mean, you can't see your elbow under the water. Um, and if you've got somebody coming up on your left side and Gregorio's always on your right side, heck, I'd be going up his blind side. Um, and so for those reasons, all of the things being equal, I think Gregorio uh, would medal. But under these long and difficult conditions, I think it's a stretch to expect him to be on the medal podium. All right. That's bound to be a controversial opinion, but you heard it here first. Thank you so much, Stephen. We'll definitely be watching Gregorio August 5th. Thank you.